All right. So we'll start our second session today of 7th of August, 2021. And in this 7th of August, we will learn about seven qualities of spiritual journey. And uh, in this, so what is this qualities all about? These qualities are just like many masters, they have given advice to the spiritual seekers to imbibe on certain qualities. It is not something to be enforced. Like if you don't do it, it will not, nothing will happen. It is not about that. It is something given as a guideline, given as advice when a spiritual seeker follows that so that the spiritual goal is reached at the, at the fastest without wasting time in unnecessary things. And uh, I call it a detour. Like you are going to a certain destination, your journey. So you will take the shortest possible path. So nowadays we have GPS, you know, so map, Google map, etc. We find out road direction, shortest route to certain destination and which is less traffic and so on and so forth. Same here. Certain guidelines have been given. Of course, you have a free will to accept it, not to accept it, follow it, not to follow it. It's, it's completely up to you. But these advices are given for a certain reason. So today I will explain them one by one. First, uh, let me inform which of the seven I uh, like uh, our agenda today. So then I will explain one by one into each one of them. First one is selfless service. Second is humility. Third is childlike trust. Fourth is practicing silence or practicing meditation. Five is purity. Purity in thoughts, words and actions. Sixth is the be with the truth or, or get direct first-hand experience of the truth. And the seventh one is unconditional love. So I will explain one by one of each one of them, the why we need that and what is the benefit. Before I go into one by one, let me just remind you the purpose of spiritual journey. Spiritual journey, all of us, as long as we have taken a human birth, at certain point of time from this plane, we have to go out. Means we have to graduate from this plane. It is like a university. It is here learn not the knowledge like a normal universities. It is learned by experience. We come here to experience certain things as per our soul's plan. Experience not necessarily good or bad. There is no duality there. Everything is experience, part of experience. You know, you like to enjoy food that is experience. You like to Face the grief of losing a loved one, that is also an experience. You may have some uh, traveling, visiting new places, that is an experience. You may have some tire puncture on the way, that is also an experience. So everything in soul's perspective are just an experience. You are experiencing something. Through the experience, you enrich yourself and when your the target experience is complete, then you need to go out. 
but I go out means you have to transcend that. Then you need not to come back like a, like a class, like a graduation happened. So all of us, you can treat that we are in that class. We're experientially understanding things, experientially learning things. Not by knowledge. Eh? Theory, everybody knows. All soul knows the theory. Only thing that needs to be experienced here. Interpersonal relationships, how to manage money, how to manage health, all these are part of the experiences. Now, that exit route or graduation, exit route looks a little bit of running away from it. There is no running away. It is facing it and graduating it. All of us who were in the class, like any other class, like any university or school or college or, you know, uh, nursery, wherever it is, the students need to graduate. No? They need to pass that, pass the exam or whatever the procedure is. They have to go through that. So we are not here for unlimited period of time. We come here for a certain purpose that is called our soul's, soul's journey. Accordingly, this particular life has a syllabus. We need to complete that as per the soul's point of view and we graduate that. Most of us, we have come into almost, say, the final year of that in the university or something. So it is a final exam coming. After that, you need not to go back to the university. You can find some other higher ed, other dimensional experiences. That is a different issue. But here, this plane, that is the final thing is you got enlightened, you self-realized, experienced everything. And then no need to come back here. <clears throat> so earlier we realized it, it is an inner journey. It is nothing to do with the external world. External world is created, time and space basically have been created for us to experience so different, different type of situations, different, different type of people, different, different uh, type of, you know, owning something, not owning something, all this will come as part of our soul's plan. And we need to experience and transcend that. We cannot stick to it. Nothing, we can be stick to it. Like, again, in the school example, if class three student says, I will not leave this class, then it is, it is not good for the education. It is not about liking or disliking. You need to learn whatever necessary and you have to graduate. You know, the first attempt you fail, second attempt and all those kind of things, but ultimately you have to go out. Same, same here. And the truth is the transcending this earth plane, that is the only way out. There cannot be any other way. You need to learn and grow and transcend that. So you need not to come back here. And that route, the final attempt, or you can take that it is like a, you wanted to go to moon. So you are making some rocket and attempts. So many attempts have been not successful, but one point of time, you will get something called escape velocity. The rocket have enough power, enough well, you know, it is supported by good technology. And then you sit in the rocket and escape velocity, you go out of the, the gravitational field once forever. So all is a preparation for that escape velocity so that we can transcend that plane. And where we'll go, we'll go back home. <laughs> where is home? We are just a visitor here. We are spiritual being having human experience, not other way around. We are not human having some kind of spiritual experience. Some master come give us some lecture and we meditate and have some experience. Oh, that's it. Oh my goodness. That's good. Good. No, we are actually the other. We belong to the other side. We are here. We forget that we, we belong to that side. So here we just on a transit. It's a limited time visa. So at the end of it, you have to go back. Why you have to go back? Why you have to? Because that is the only way out. That is the only way back. There is no other way back possible. That's why.
what we have is as per our free will we have any number of attempts the creation is not in a hurry because there is no time in the higher dimension if you if you don't agree if you argue and you say oh, oh this is not for me and they say oh, this uh, spiritual journey is spirituality is only for the old people who has nothing else to do who are not successful in life they do this you can convince yourself with many other ways that's what ego does and uh, end of the day will not take the path and you will come back again there is no hurry no maybe five five more birds 10 more birds 50 more birds how does it matter you know there is no nobody is behind you to get it quick it is your inner call that makes it to happen it is your choice fully free will when we all of us we have minimum 500 to 700 human births and you have seen the same story playing again and again and again some it is all stored there in sutratma in fifth body out of seven body system so they time to time give some kind of glimpses so that's why you feel inner call what i am doing here okay so sometimes it comes normal way sometimes it comes hard way like sometimes it comes that nothing is working in your life anymore i had this similar situation 2008 nothing is happening the way i wanted become failure everywhere on top of i have an alcoholic addiction and family was almost uh, trying to get destroyed and fired from the job and so on and so forth many many issues then i asked that time i met my guruji brahmashri prem nirmal ji dr prem ji nirmal so he came to muskat that time and after listening you know few of his uh, satsang or lecture then one on one i asked him how come it is possible that nothing is working in my life you know there should be something you know some of the field was earlier going away from my life but i was very successful professionally as in my field i had the highest level of certification in my field called catholic protection specialist i went to Houston to get certification uh, and uh, level four they call it uh, so that is the best possible certification and when I come back as elected chairman of my professional group into the country you know man so so I was very successful I was uh, in uh, professionally but after a certain point of time I realized that uh, nobody is consulting me means you know I am become feeling useless you know. what is the point that you have a great knowledge but nobody is you know coming problems are there but they are coming to solve to you to give you the solution as if that you are outcasted somehow but then i that is the only point left and i was very much frustrated and that time i met him uh, guru ji prem nirmal ji then he told me one thing what i have written in my spiritual journey from where it all started then when he said there if nothing is working in your life remember that time of your enlightenment has come okay how long you will be running behind that's uh, the lure of this the reality outside try to find happiness and things like that so that moment it has been changed you know i started that inner journey from that time hmm. i practically got disconnected for everything in the outside world no matter what is running it's it's a, it is go to the autopilot whatever is happening doesn't matter fully concentrated on my spiritual journey so and then 2010 that enlightenment the divine grace happened i cannot achieve it i cannot get enlightened it happens it is it is a divine grace that happens when it happens nobody knows you are not the control you know and it is not a measure of anything either oh somebody got it in uh, you know 2 years somebody 5 years somebody 5 months somebody 2 months doesn't matter 
how many times. At the divine time, it will happen. Only thing you have to prepare for yourself. Anyway, this uh, the journey when uh, that happened, huh, then there is no, you know, turning back. Then everything else fall in place. <coughs> the rest of the things sorted out on their own. I didn't do anything. So on their own and things come back to the track in my external life and things like that. So they stop the things I have already shared how my life goes. But this particular area, so when you are walking on that path, so initially people ask, what is there for me? You know, why should I, I, I often get this question, by the way. They're basically asking me, that is it my time worth spending for spirituality? Because I'm too busy, you know, so I'm, I'm just... So convince me that why I need to spend, say, even one hour of time, my precious time for this activity. Okay. And uh, it depends what is their intention. If the intention is just to, so that they can get convinced to come into the spirituality, I tell, no, 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 it's a vestige of time for you. <laughs> okay. Don't bother, enjoy life. <clears throat> because you're basically his time has not come yet. It is not about convincing somebody and put it into some some track where they don't want to go. It is not that. It is some inner call has to come. In my case, just now I explained from where it came. Inner call has to come, then you gotta realize that what I am doing here. You know, whatever knowledge, whatever experience I had from the external knowledge, education, or, you know, professional experience or whatever it is, power, money, whatever I have, I already used it, nothing worked. What do I do now? So this particular case, then it, then we go because there is no way outside, you realize that in the hard way. So then you start going inward. What we get now, I'm sharing that <coughs> the answer to that question, what you will get into that inner journey, a spiritual journey. You will get from limited power to unlimited power. You can get from mortality to immortality. Okay. Listen this part very, very carefully. This is a journey to tap into something which is much, much beyond you and the physical entity. You will be, you will be in the position of co-creator along with the, the original, co with the original creator. You can create any reality for you. But the beauty is when you go to that level, your ego is lost, individuality is lost. You become part of the divine. So me, mine, okay, my house, you know, my property, my car, <coughs> all these things will disappear. When you have the power, you use the power for the humanity. You become an agent of the divine. What divine wants to do for the humanity, like taking care of the children, same thing you will do selflessly. Because in this world, nobody has that kind of wealth to pay you back. Somebody's life has been transformed. It cannot be paid back. It is impossible to pay it back. Somebody has showed you the way towards the liberation from so many hundreds of human lifetimes. You are running around in the circles. It cannot be paid back. And that's why when it comes also, it comes unconditionally without any expectation. They don't even expect anything from you. It is comes like a sunlight. Do the sun send you bill every month? for the light, <laughs> not only light, all foods we take actually came from the sun, energy of sun. Photosynthesis happens and then we eat the plant or plant eaten by animal, we eat the animal and things like that. 
that is free. The air we breathe, that is free. There was a story, you know, in, in the social media that in Italy or somewhere, uh, you know, somebody was having COVID and put it into the ventilator you know, for a week or something. And he has been put some uh, uh, 5,000 euro bill for the oxygen, which is used for the ventilator to give him during this. So he was crying <clears throat> when getting discharged from that hospital. The doctor came, he said, old, old man. Um, so he was saying, uh, is the bill too much? Uh, is, is it, do you don't have that money to pay? So he just, <laughs> doctor tried to help him. He said, no, 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 I have millions. I don't bother about the money. I'm just thinking that for this one week, uh, for giving me oxygen, you charge 5,000 euro. I'm now 75 years old. All these years, I'm breathing for free. If I have to pay for that, then my savings is become a peanuts then. I could not pay for the oxygen I'm breathing. Anyway, so it is the divine flow works that way. It is invaluable. Okay, so it is. it cannot be paid in, in the quantum of something. In other words, spiritual understanding is you cannot pay something to the creator who, to, who created. Even the wealth you are having, that is also created by, by him or not the universal consciousness. Creator. So first point is when you grow, do, you know, you want to work. Now I'm coming to the point number one, which is selfless service. If you want to spiritual path, first thing you align yourself, what divine wants for the humanity. When you give selfless service, you become part of the divine plan. You become part of the flow. Then the divine energy, the prosperity, that, that flow, the infinite potential flow through you and reaches to people. You are nobody. But it flows through you that you feel blessed that it is flowing through you. All selfish motives, why should I give this person? No, no I, I will not give that. And this all goes. It doesn't matter. You know, what that person will do with it, whether that person deserves it, or <coughs> none of your business. It flows through you. More you, you it flows more you give selfless service, more divine energy will come to you and flow through you. And that is why the selfless service is needed. And in the morning, uh, I think somebody asked, uh, how do we consider some service is selfless? Okay, quick check. After doing that service, <laughs> you ask yourself, am I expecting a thank you in return? Minimum. Forget about others. If you expect the same favor to be returned back, that's a higher level. Say, so, am, am I expecting a recognition or thank you from the receiver huh, who received it? For, to you, ask yourself. If the answer is no, that is a selfless service. If answer is yes, why you should not give? He, yes, it is his duty. He should also return. Uh, then it is not a selfless anymore. That is a, that is a transaction. It is not selfless. Selfless is something you give for the joy of giving. You are blessed that it is happening to you, like the sunlight. It is, it is just giving. There is no discrimination. As I said, there is no bill. There is no asking. You have to qualify to get it. No, equally. A blade of grass and richest person in the world get the similar sunlight. No difference. It doesn't need to qualify for things. So same here. So you don't discriminate. So you don't fall into the trap of being, you know, better than someone. So that is the first one. And the second point comes from here. When that is a humility. When you align yourself with the divine, you know that Whatever you are passing on, you are not a creator of that. Nothing belongs to you. You are not the owner of that. That energy, that power, that prosperity, that healing or whatever it is, you know, the knowledge, 
some technique, some guidance, whatever you are sharing, you are not the owner of that. You are an agent. You are just passing it from, from the higher dimension to this dimension. You are an agent or maximum a translator so that you are translating it so that people can understand, people can receive it properly. That's all you are doing. That's it. When you go to that territory, <coughs> knowledge is a very dangerous thing. It, it boosted ego. Those who transcended that, they realize how much, you know, how much knowledge they don't know. I have shared earlier the story of Newton. End of his life, you know, we know all his career, what he did, you know, in the physics and other areas. At the end of his life, he said, in my life, whatever knowledge I gathered, in the ocean of knowledge, if I consider whatever knowledge already available in this world is ocean, <laughs> I just collected few grains of sand in the sea beach. In my knowledge, even doesn't qualify me to go in the water. Forget about the sea. This kind of realization comes who has actually gone into the field of knowledge. So in other words, it is infinite. You cannot have it. You, you don't have a capacity to have it. What you need to do, you need to tune in to that infinite source so that the knowledge flows through you. Whenever you need anything for anyone <coughs> or you need to know something, that source is called universal knowledge or Brahma Gyan. You cannot have it. So, so <coughs> here it is not about your memory capacity and brain capacity or you don't have capacity, as simple as that. No matter how intelligent you are, you don't have that capacity. The knowledge we are saying here, it comes instantly and it flows through you. You need not to store it. Any master is sitting and giving some kind of discourses and all. He or she is not bringing it from the memory. Eh? Just connect. Connect it and it flows through him or her. <coughs> and that's it. That is how you handle the infinite source. And for that, you need to have humility. You cannot have enough to challenge that, you know, that infinite source. And whatever you say and do, that is not enough for the world. Okay, that makes you humble. So what, what you can do, you do your best and leave it to the divine. It is the divine will that makes it happening, not you. So that realization comes and automatically the humility comes. And in the other side of flip side of that is, if you are in a hum you, you observing humility, you living a life of attitude of gratitude, that is highest possible vibration. You will attract all this much more that energy from that divine sources or infinite sources will flow through you because you are observing attitude of gratitude. You are observing attitude of gratitude is not because that Babaji wants to be grateful for his blessings or Mataji or anybody else, uh, you know, Krishna or Lord Shiva or anybody, Jesus or Buddha will be happy if you are grateful to them and say, oh Lord, thank you very much. No, they don't need it. They don't need anything from you. Like I said earlier, not even a thank you. They don't, they don't need. It is for you to be in attitude of gratitude so that your vibration remain high. You enjoy that energy, you enjoy the power. Okay. This divine energy, who can enjoy, like it's like a rain. Rain is happening, 
somebody enjoy the rain and somebody complain about the mud okay same rain but experiences are different because the divine flow is also like that either you are experiencing it or not experiencing it it flow is happening all the time truth is <coughs> divine grace is showering all the time it does not belong to limited few or chosen ones or only for the masters you know people think oh the masters they will get it i cannot get no everybody is getting it. <laughs> like i said the like a sunlight everybody is getting it what do you do with it is up to you whether you realize it is up to you realization is yes it is up to you but source is not doing any kind of discrimination at the same time if you vibrate in the higher vibration level automatically you will be ability to absorb more and <coughs> to pass through you that energy more your ability will increase that's it it is like you know going to a rain with some container the size of the container decide how much water you can hold it and if you hold the container upside down you will you can get nothing okay so this all depends so only attitude of gratitude means you can hold a bigger vessel so that you can collect you know collect uh, maximum that that's that's the thing otherwise same rain is happening all right now the third point is <laughs> it's called child like trust okay what is child like trust you know uh, the small child when the you know father is playing with the father and the father is bouncing the child like throwing in the air and catching and child is laughing oh i want it again you know um, so that time the child is laughing <laughs> enjoying because child knows that my father will not cheat me he will catch me he will not allow me to fall down on the ground and get hurt that is called child like trust the we should have that kind of child like trust <coughs> to the divine when it comes to the trust we talk about it but actually we don't follow we don't we don't allow our life to be governed by the divine so what is this you know it is uh, how how it is possible but i shared <coughs> just in the beginning of the session when it came to me actually i was forced to live it everything because i i could not do anything whatever i know i have done applied still not happening with the with that kind of failure in my life then divine took over and changes the course of my life into the right direction and then my life purpose came then you know all those things happened guru appeared in my life learned something and got then it <coughs> went into the right direction so before that it is a, we fall into the mess so why to go to wait till the mess to realize this you know if you realize it earlier you can avoid that painful stuff and that's how the, the child like trust is like that so there was a story of uh, you know one person is uh, you know walking on the there are two multi story buildings say maybe 250 story building and there is a rope so a lot of people are watching <coughs> um and uh, some video camera etc so now there was a betting and challenges whether he will be able to cross it or not so finally he without anything any any holding anything he just walk on the rope maybe 50 meter and to go to the other building 
So everybody clapped. So now he said, okay, my now I will hold my hold my daughter in my lap and I will walk back. Do you think I'll be able to do that? So again, some percentage. Somebody says yes, somebody says no. But now most of the, you know, 75% said yes. So he crossed this again with uh, his daughter and say, oh, fine, that's great. Yeah. So now he said, uh, now tell me that can I carry anyone to the other side, uh, uh, to the other side? Uh, so everybody said, yes, you can convinced. Then I said, can any one of you voluntarily come to me? I will take you to the other side. Nobody came. The same, they clapped. They know it is possible, but they don't have trust. Now put the divine into that position of that person. We clap it. We know that it is possible to take the other side, but we don't have a trust. And that's why we miss every time. Miss this opportunity every time. We don't have that trust. But if we analyze, it is not that we don't, you know, sometime in the situationally, we, we trust someone which we don't know, like, a, <clears throat> like a, you are flying from say, suppose I'm flying from Dubai to Paris. I go sit in the aeroplane. I don't know who the pilot is. Even the, you know, he announces the name and the you know, flight. I assume, okay, you must be qualified. Airline should have some procedure to qualify. What is the mental state of that person? I don't know. Today, he might have fight or maybe one day before he had some drink. Now, now he is sober, but he had something. I don't know. I trust him to take me safely from Dubai to Paris. Seven hours flight, I sit down, trust that he will take me. But same trust, we don't show it to the creator. And that's why we miss it. So in the spiritual path, we have to have childlike trust. What is the fear about all those kind of things uh, we are thinking? that creator will not allow us to fall and break down because it is not the interest of the creator either. Why he will destroy the creation? <laughs> he has given free will. He has given a choice. So we have to choose that. We have to surrender our life's journey like that pilot we don't know. We need not to know. We ask thousands of questions, how it is possible and this is that and all this kind of stuff. Basically, we don't trust. Like that, uh, the, the rope walker, nobody came. <laughs> so when the time comes, we don't go. We don't think it is possible that divine will take care of everything. We give big talk, but when time comes, we don't go there. Okay, anyway, I'll leave it there. Next is point is practicing silence. <clears throat> For any, this journey is all about your inner journey, going inward. It is not possible <coughs> initially, I'm taking, when you become expert, everything is possible. It is not possible to walk your inner journey when you are engaged into the outside world. Outside world is governed by the scientific principle. It is, it is a study of the external world. People try to replicate what they have learned outside. Inner journey is not possible because it is not followed by that science. <coughs> science we learn is a different type of science, spiritual science. So you need to disconnect with that external. Don't try to copy it. Okay, if you try to copy your road traffic policy into air traffic, you will be miserably failed. 
He will ask stupid questions like, is the flight stop at the red light? <coughs> I said, there is no red light. Oh, how come? There is no control? Yes, there is a control, but there is no red light. Okay, there is no traffic signal. It's a stupid question. But only thing is, so that's what most of the people they try to do. They try to replicate whatever they have learned in the external world and try to replicate. Most of the question come the performance measurements, target achievement, and all this all are nonsense <coughs> in the inner, inner, inner world. In fact, the journey is different than our external survival for the fittest. <clears throat> because we need not to compete with anyone. It is not possible. In the spiritual journey, nobody is higher than you. And nobody is lower than you. And nobody is equal to you either. So how it is possible? Because in that journey, you are alone. It is your unique journey. That's why you are not bigger, smaller, you know, same and things. So there is no comparison. You are walking your own unique path. The, <clears throat> the spiritual masters, they have already walked their path. Destination is same. But paths are not same. It is like a climbing mountain. Ultimately, everybody has to reach to the peak. But not necessarily through the same path. As the masters has already walked that path, they can at least tell you, go in that direction. Peak is there. Peak is not here. <coughs> so they are like a road sign. They will not, they cannot actually walk for you. They can say, okay, I will meditate for the next five days and pass on the benefit to it. It's not possible because you have to walk the path. Like if you are hungry, you have to eat yourself. Somebody else cannot eat on your behalf. Okay, so it's same here. They can guide you, sure. If you are misguided, they can tell you, no, this is not the right way. That is the right way. If I, again, you have a choice to listen or not to listen. But that inner journey... <coughs> initially needed to disconnect from the external world. That's why you need a silence. First, the silence of your senses, like a mouth, etc. Like you are not talking and all those kind of things. You are not engaged in listening and other kind of stuff initially. And, <clears throat> and focusing inward. That's why the meditation is there. Meditation makes you to achieve the silence of the mind, the chattering thought. So you are, you are silent, you are not active, at least you are sitting still, and the stillness of mind that is needed for spiritual journey, inner journey. If you are engaged in any kind of external activity, it's not possible to walk the path. But when you achieve the peak, anything is possible. People can walk, people can talk, again, they can be connected. But that is a master's area. Initially, you have to practice silence so that you can disconnect from this. You create a space so that you can take U-turn and then see what is happening in your inner, inner world. Next is the purity. Purity of thoughts, words and actions. This purity... <clears throat> also, I, uh, I call it a, having a spiritual character. Okay, this character has nothing to do with morality or your, uh, your behavior or illicit relationship with anyone. You know, it doesn't matter. Character in the spiritual terms means you have a congruence of thoughts, words and actions. Whatever you are thinking, that, that you are saying and that you are doing. You have a congruence. Most of the people are smart. They think something, say something, do something else. Okay, They think it is a smart move. You know, see, I, I can cheat so many people. Cheat means I can outsmart so many people. 
this outsmart stuff is hindrance to our spiritual journey we have to come to the basics the simple thing like a child like you see the child you know what what about the things they say you know that they, they have they don't have a permanent enemy or something like that okay one day two day they have fight with some friend tomorrow they are going you know again together and they're nice friends you know adult they cannot do that something happened wrong one month they will not talk to each other <clears throat> okay they hold on to their grudge or whatever it is their ego but the child they don't have it they have a this congruence okay they have a purity in heart so they don't hold okay something happened okay now is let us be friend again no oh, that's fine <laughs> let us have fun you know that's the way to live a life that is a purity next one is <clears throat> the truth what is truth your experiential understanding of what it is everything is is what it is okay you have to experience it directly rest of the things are all in versions even if somebody is telling the truth has already contaminated even if i am saying something to you it's not the truth truth is what came to me that is the truth once it is converted into words or you know writing or video or anything it's already the lost that the truth is a version so you need to have the direct experience of the truth from from directly from the creator the universal knowledge that is called brahma gyan brahman is the universe brahma gyan the universal knowledge you have to get directly experience and then then it is your truth rest of all are versions it is only possible during meditation when you download this and then everything become clear okay just uh, i think yesterday i was discussing with vidya uh, vidya we are talking about breath now what was your question can you just repeat it is my breath and all then i got the explanation part vidya from bangalore what was your question that time so how can i follow my breath sir yesterday i was asking you about triode dissolution in that i was asking you if i have to be aware of my breath then someone should be witnessing the breath that means i am still there i am being aware of my breath so if i am not there how to be aware of the breath is what i was asking okay all right correct correct good good okay you heard the question if i am i am breathing i am watching my breath i am involved here no see that i need to go so how it is possible that i am watching my breath but i am not there then you go to the truth eh? so then i explain it to her uh, this is a higher level of understanding you it is all of course when we say it it is your breath i am not saying that you have to turn it differently only say you are breathing and all i also mentioned many time but if you wanted to investigate go into the deep then what you find you are breathing but it is not your breath breath is happening you didn't created the breath you didn't create the air neither you have created your own body or how much air it will be sucked into in your nostril how far it will go in what force it will go when it will return how it will return how it will come out what is the purpose of it what it will do inside your body when it is outside how it will do how far outside the body it will go you have nothing you didn't do anything of it it is gifted to you 
how can you claim it is your breath when everything is designed, installed, commission, run by the somebody else? That is the truth, right? Even your breath is not belong to you. Okay, you can hold your nose for some time, few seconds, huh? maximum. Breath started by some divine grace. <laughs> One point of time, it will stop also by divine grace and you have to leave the body. It doesn't belong to you. It is, it, it's not, it is happening to you. Only thing you have to be aware of that. Okay, so in that sense, nothing is yours. Everything you are gifted, you are a temporary, like a rent a car you had, you know, and after some time it will be taken from you. See, that is the truth, no? That is, otherwise claim, so my breath. So, so this is the kind of truth you will get on the spiritual journey. And first thing what will happen, it will change, you will, it will make the paradigm shift into your whole, <coughs> you know, entity or consciousness or whatever it is. Way of looking at life will be completely different when you go to the truth of it. Okay. So you have to simply be aware of that something is happening. If suppose your heartbeat, it is given to you, it is happening, it's not yours. So, <clears throat> to make it simple, these are the divine gifts given to you. And operating by the divine. When you get connected with that, be aware of that, you also get connected with the divine. That makes sense? It is, it is a divine instrument instrument pulsating within you, throbbing within you. Through that instrument, you are connecting to the creator. And that's the spiritual journey is all about. We do Hridaya Upasana. No? We do Anapansati Dhyan. Why? These are the divine instrument, <coughs> instrument which is happening. I'm not the owner, neither the creator. But it is created by is created by the divine, so through that I connect to the divine. Okay, in fact, whole human body is created by the divine, and human body is created out of pure love energy. That's why the human body is called Prema Sarupa, manifestation of love. It is a pure love, none of the love we normally use. It's nothing to do with that. It's a pure love. And that is the last point, the unconditional love. Human beings have been created out of pure love, energy. When your heart chakra opens, you, you express yourself through unconditional love. You connect to the creator. That enlighten your journey back home. So this is the last but the not the least point. If you learn to operate from the pure love, then you are already <coughs> traveled much to the spiritual journey and much closer to your spiritual home, where anyway you have to go this lifetime or any other lifetime, over 5, 10, 20, 50 or 1000 lifetimes. You have to, there's no other way. So we learn and we, we know it, then we practice it. And as I said, the, our individual journeys are unique. So it is not necessarily same thing will happen to everybody at the same time, but that is the way back. And these are the seven qualities of our spiritual journey we need to imbibe upon. So that completes the learning session. So if you have any question, I'll answer that. Yes, Rashi. Uh, so, Guruji, it is regarding the first point, that selfless service that you have spoken of. 
So, like in the past, can as you, well, uh, people it's have... not very clear. Can you bring some microphone closer or something like that? Yeah. Can you hear me now? Better. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, my point is regarding the selfless service. Um, so, in the past, we may have helped people uh, where just out of you know uh, a desire to help someone uh, financially or any other. But now, uh, when I uh, when we hear today about this seven qualities, uh, there might be this one, uh, this thing that okay, if I help someone, I will, you know, I will grow spiritually. So, so that might be an expectation or you know, like something to get in return. Do you, is it like does it qualify for for the for the uh, how do I say? You said right that you need to selflessly serve it, serve people without any expectation. But here, this is like I'm I'm I will go spiritually. <laughs> yeah, that. no, no, you have a good question. Yeah. See, there, 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 is, there is a fallacy here. But let me make it clear: the expectation from the other party should not have. Okay. To whom you are giving, you should not expect anything in return. That's it. But by giving, <coughs> you can you can offer it to the divine, and said you feel like you are growing in your spiritual journey. That is fine. Okay. okay. Like suppose we are meditating, and our intention is to grow spiritually. That is no selfish motive in that. It is only about when you give it to somebody else, and you expect that person to do something in return. Then it is a transaction. But if it is your intention to grow spiritually by giving, nothing wrong with that. It's all within you, right? All within you. Hmm. But if you say, <coughs> I'm giving this person uh, 1000 rupees, uh, God give me 10,000. Otherwise, next time I will not give this guy. So then it is a transaction. No? You got my point. I'm giving it, but I feel good and I'm growing. I just <coughs> seek blessings. That's it. Then it is not uh, the selfish motive. Hmm. Clear? Yes. Good. Thank you. Yes, Vikas. God bless you. Yes, Vikas. Uh, RPA, what is the difference between purity and truth? Truth is pure. <laughs> truth is pure and purity is truth. Okay. Um, truth is, as I said, that which is comes from the divine source. It cannot be contaminated when you get it directly. When you get directly from the source, it cannot be contaminated. Hmm. So that is your truth. But you need to connect directly and get it. Hmm. Purity, what you are observing here is maintaining the congruence of thoughts, words and actions. That is you are observing it as a practice. For you to receive the truth, to be ready for the truth, to be realized. Otherwise, if the mind is still playing it and trying to manipulate it, even the truth arrives to you, it will not be, you know, received well. Okay. So, this particular when a truth is what you experience directly and also it is said that truth, truth liberates you. If when the truth comes, then your all this kind of dilemma and uh, confusion, everything is cleared up automatically. Like a sunlight comes, everything becomes visible like that. Okay, so there is no question of any kind of you know manipulation there. So that that is the that is the truth is like that. It is difficult to uh, explain into words, but it is the experience of the direct connection. When you feel it, you know it. So pure purity is prerequisite for truth. Yes, because you are you are having the ability to handle the truth. Okay, you have a congruence in the thoughts, words and actions are same. You are not manipulating anything. The tendency of manipulation has gone. 
So when you receive it, you receive it in the pure form. Okay, that that's how it works. I think all the seven steps are interconnected to yes, get to the part truth. of the spiritual journey. Yeah, it's part of the spiritual journey. These are the qualities we should have. Okay, these are all interconnected. That's correct. Okay, but what I'm saying is don't confuse between the purity and the truth. Truth is pure. That is its quality. Truth by itself is pure. But what I spoke here, that you need to observe that purity to receive that pure thing. But then for purity, we cannot depend on the mind. If Yes. So you have to stop the mind. That is previous step. Silencing your mind. Yeah, sometimes the mind is very high and sometimes it is below the ground. Yeah. So you have to stop it altogether so that it doesn't interfere during that meditation. Okay. Thank so, you. So that it cannot com contaminate the truth. Then it is no longer a truth. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. Yes. Uh, they will come back to you. Um, yes, go ahead with them. Mm. Sir, you had explained in great detail about purity that you're talking about character in spirituality, that uh, congruency in thoughts, words, and actions. So that you had explained in a voice message, I think, last year. And I have the voice message, so I can post that message and transcript in the group. Okay, share it in the group so that others also can listen to that. Good. Yeah, thank you, Vidya. We will be looking for it. Okay, Debu, you have any question? Yes, Rasdev. Actually, it was on the first uh, point itself, the simple mm -hmm. In fact, it is uh, one question what. Uh, voice see, is not level. expecting a thank you is fine. Yeah, not expecting is thank you is fine. My mm -hmm. question is, can you hear me now? Yes, yeah. Am I audible? Yes, go okay. ahead. My question is, expecting a blessing from others, mm -hmm. is that also an expectation? No. I do good to somebody, I help somebody, and then I don't expect anything in return from him or her, but I mm -hmm. want him to bless me. Is that an expectation or? No, uh, no, it is. It is okay uh, to have that expectation. No, it's not expectation. You are seeking blessings from someone. You are, it is not a transactionary stuff. Means, you know, I, I, I will pay you 1000 rupees and then you bless me, then it's a transaction. Okay. Mm -hmm. no, what is so, what I say? But is, if you ask it simply, thank you. Your voice is breaking. Okay, let me explain it so, so that, uh, see, seeking blessings is not an expectation. Okay, seeking blessings is blessed to be the good and the highest potential of anything is possible. Okay, that's where it is not, you know, the transactional. But we can make it transactional if it is linked to something else. So the link has to cut. Of course. Okay. You, you cannot say, ki, uh, okay, I will give you 1000 rupees, you bless me. Then it is a transaction. Okay. Then if somebody is seeking blessings, you, you know, that person blessed you. And then you, you had, you enjoy and had a, a party together. Nothing wrong in that. That's not a transaction. Okay. So it is the way you use it that makes the difference. Right. Okay. So one so if you one more question. question. Yeah. Go ahead. Right. Got it. Got it. One more question. It is on the uh, the sixth one. To be with the truth. Get direct first experience of truth. Yeah. Now uh, it is just a clarification. What I understand is these all seven uh, guidelines, they can be probably consciously practiced by somebody. 
yeah, who has not yet attended uh, enlightenment. But this mm -hmm. one probably cannot be consciously practiced. We can only try to achieve that. Yes. Am I correct in my understanding? That's correct. Only that is needed. But see, unless and you don't know which which of the quality you need to have, how you can observe that? The okay. degree, how much you can imbibe. But later on, what will happen is it will be part of your character. It will automatically happen. Then you need to try like a like a learning driving or something like that. Initially, you need to give effort to put the gear, right. change the brake and I mean, change the gear and put the brake and all that. But later on, it will come automatically. Same here. It's a skill. But if you, these are the qualities, if you develop that skill, then automatically you will be walking the spiritual path smoothly. But reverse is not true. If you don't observe, somebody will punish you. No. <coughs> Only thing, it will be a delay. That's all. Without that okay. also, it is possible to walk the spiritual path. But these are the qualities, the recommendations. As I said, it is not a compulsion. Right, right, yes. it's, not a, it's not a rule. It is a guideline. Yes, right. Okay. okay, thank you, Rajdeep. All right, okay, God bless you. Question, Rajdeep. <laughs> yes, very well. So, I mean, we can develop these characteristics, right? Can this face your journey? But some of these, just some are ingrained in our, um, in our behaviors through basic instinct, right? Instinctive characteristic. You, yeah. you are you react to something based on your ins however you have, all through your life you have been raised and whatever and I will react to it so at that one instant of time if I see a, an incident happening and you see your in, an instance our reactions will be different right? yes so in that split of second <laughs> in that way, how our instinct has to Kind of be subdued, and then we have to take these characteristics to act on. Yeah. So there's, a, there's a conflict, right? I don't know. There is no conflict. Only thing you have to develop is some space in between. Any outside input and your response. If you react, means immediate. There is no space. Only thing what you need to do in the spiritual practice to create that space so that you have certain, certain in a millisecond gap between you react to anything that is called response and this response can be developed by witnessing all the masters they have developed this quality simply by witnessing what is happening to the to his mind and what is before you say you are watching what is being said going to be said okay and there comes the control there comes the power mm. Okay, it is not auto run. That is a type of life we have been lived for so long. Maybe I'm thinking of a scenario. For example, somebody is getting mob lynched or something, and I'm Can there, you? right? Yes, you are. And there. I, my instinctive nature is to jump into it and try to stop it, right? But I know your guidance will be to seek, seek the peace of mind. I can walk away. And see no, I'm not it. saying that you, you walk away. No, <laughs> what I'm saying is that moment you just judge. Are you in a position to control that? You have all the power to do that or you will also get beaten up. Mm. If, if you can have a power to stop it, do it. Uh. But if you don't have a power, don't jeopardize yourself. Like, like a mask, uh, oxygen mask comes in the flight. No? They say before giving it to a child, you have to wear the mask first. So assess the situation. If you can, you, you overpower that person, do it. You know, not running away every time. This assessment is comes from that fraction of a second where you need to help make sure you are in a position not to help. Somebody is droning. You have to jump into the water to save that person. That is fine. But first you check whether you know swimming or not. If not, you jeopardize two person. Somebody else needs to come to, you know, save both of you. Avoid that. Okay. Okay. Right. So just assess. Even if doing something without losing your peace of mind, you can overpower, you can punish that guy. Do it. Okay. Okay. 
coward. Okay, that means in other words, cowardice is not the spirituality. Right. Assessment, right assessment is spirituality. Spirituality guides us, which is appropriate for the situation. And both sides, in either other sides, are all stupidity. You know, over over enthusiastic and non responsive. Both are stupidity. Appropriate action comes from there. Like I'm just giving you an example to make it clear. So suppose uh, people are sitting in a restaurant. Okay, some cockroach came. Hmm. There some people have some reaction. <laughs> they just simply run away from that restaurant. Reaction. Okay. Some people just go and kill that cockroach. Step on that cockroach and kill it. That is also another reaction. Okay. Both these extremes are nonsense. If somebody is spiritual, appropriate action could have been take a glass or something, catch that cockroach and throw it out. Okay, just respond to the situation. Both panic situation makes you to take some kind of, you know, some extreme measures which we need to avoid. There can be some better solution to the situations. If you are in awareness, you will get the solution. It will come to you. If you, you don't want to do it, you just call that <coughs> somebody, <coughs> hotel staff or restaurant staff and say, there is a cockroach, please hold it and throw it out. That's it. You need not to run away from the restaurant, neither you have to go and kill it immediately. Both are extreme reactions. Okay. okay. All right. So, so that is the thing. The appropriate response comes. Uh, Abhikas, I'll come back to you. Shupriya, yes, go ahead. This, this, uh, I was just thinking about the cockroach example that you gave. And okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, if, if speaking, there are uh, many such uh, uh, life situations or things happen which are like cockroaches infest they basically infest life sometimes and, mm -hmm. um isn't i mean is it how do you deal with this because you know that uh, uh, if you let it be there or if you don't actually run either you run away or you take action so that it does not spread in your life mm -hmm. uh, it could be a person it could be a situation yeah so there uh, it, I mean, is it rooting it out entirely a wrong thing? No, that may be one appropriate action. But what I'm saying is go through that process. Na? Things will come to you instantly. If you are in the awareness, no, this is some input is happening. You are in the awareness. Maybe your response will be to run away. That's fine. But what I'm saying is if you connected you know, our soul knows everything. If you get that momentary guidance, you can get the best solution out of it. You need not to plan it and it, it cannot be planned. Actually, it depends on the situation. Hmm. OK, so what to do? But in that moment, you just get that guidance, give microsecond gap between anything you react in. Suppose you said something later on, you have to take the <coughs> what you said it is back. So th that is a re reaction. No? So the response, maybe you don't say say anything, just simply leave the place and leave it like that. You are not here to solve all the problems of the world. That assessment comes if it is your direct responsibility. Yes. Then you have to take action. It is your duty. But if it is not, maybe you just leave it there. The only uh, sometimes it happens that situations happen where uh, it's it may be related to someone or some uh, some situation where you you really cannot uh, totally run away from it. At the Correct. Same way, so, so okay. How do you deal with it? I mean, do you just keep listening to it, or do you? Uh, 
that cockroach like no there are many <coughs> many uh, you can you can protect yourself in that kind of situation if you cannot, cannot avoid it you energetically protect yourself you have a lot of tools to do that okay you can always pray for the divine intervention you know maybe that will also may happen you know there is a <clears throat> again this is a comes back to the trusting the divine we don't trust that divine can solve the issue i have to do something to solve it i'm going to let me share one story of uh, mother teresa um, in mother teresa a home in uh, you know in uh, kolkata what happened was uh, there was uh, uh, some <coughs> 300 guests some were coming to visit that from outside from some other ashram or some place so then one of the sister they, they were almost able to you know arrive uh, maybe at 11 o'clock so about 10:30 one sister came and said mother uh, our uh, kitchen has you know no rice nothing food is almost empty and 300 people are coming <coughs> so what to do so you know what mother teresa said she said oh, do one thing go to the chapel and pray and tell jesus that 300 people are coming and to arrange something that's your duty yeah. she could have said oh go to market and call so and so she herself could have been call someone some uh, even to mayor of kolkata to deliver something quickly and all she didn't do anything He said, "Okay, you pray to Jesus that we have, we are in trouble. Some people are coming, and all this." <coughs> the sister got surprised, but she did whatever, you know, went and pray and come back. So, just after twenty twenty five minutes, uh, somebody rang the bell, and uh, they said, uh, "We are we are coming from that local the municipality." what happened was uh, some political party called on strike all schools are closed during day time the food program no we have <coughs> thousands of people food are there for the children with us can you help us to do something how we can distribute it okay this how it happened sometimes not doing something can open up the divine intervention it cannot be logically understood <clears throat> i am not saying every time it will happen i am no one to claim that okay but i have given one example how divine intervention happens how you can manifest things simple by faith this has been manifested by mother teresa she was the same <clears throat> so not everything you need to arrange the way you think the solution is the solution to be calling somebody municipal commissioner or mayor or to do something or you know whatever you know but she didn't do that <clears throat> anyway so just i leave it there but if you if you just whatever you do my advice is do your best rest you leave it to divine to be taken care of it may not happen the way you think but it will happen how it should be okay all right vikas you have some question yeah rbi i was just thinking uh child like trust what you said mm -hmm. and surrender mm -hmm. total surrender is it the yeah. same or uh, there is a there is a uh, no it is the same surrender means my good my bad and everything all belongs to you i am enjoying <laughs> i'm a child there i is... don't have to worry about my uh, survival or my uh, you know some something bad will happen to me because i am in the hand of my father that's right. an emotional trust 
Okay. Thank okay, you. I have given an example. It happens. No? Almost every father does that, you know, bouncing the child and playing with the child and throwing in the air and something like that, you know. So that's common. So it's not very unusual. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. God bless you.